part two of building guitar solos using chord tones. We're using the chord progression D, C, G, D, which is the verse chord progression for Sweet Child of Mine. First thing we're going to do is turn these chords into bar chords. The D is going to get turned into a bar chord at the fifth fret. The C is going to get turned into a bar chord at the 8th fret, and the G is going to get turned into a bar chord at the 7th fret. How did we get these bar chords? So for the D bar chord, we took the A shape, the A cowboy chord, rearrange our fingers as if there's a fret up top, we're going to move that all the way up to the 5th fret. This chord shape at the 5th fret is D. For the C chord, to get that bar chord shape up here, we're starting with an E major shape. Rearrange your fingers as if there's a fret there. We're going to take that all the way up to the 8th fret. E, F, G, A, B, C. And for the G chord, we have this shape. This starts off as a C chord. Rearrange your fingers. Move that all the way up to the seventh fret. And there's G. Once we have our bar chords, we're going to turn these into three note groups. Same as we did before. The groups will consist of notes on the fourth, third, and second string. That's for the first group. And the second group is third string, second string, first string. So if we take our D bar chord shape, our chord groups from this are going to be here and here. You may recognize that this is the same from part one. These shapes are the same as the C bar chord shape that we used previously. This is why we're doing these three note groups. You're going to discover that if you did part one, you've actually already learned these groups. They're just in a different spot on the neck now. So D for C, group one. And the same as the G from part one. And for the G chord, we get group one, group two, which is the same as the D from part one. So let's review those in case I confused you. For D, group one, group two. For C, group one, group two. For G, group one, group two. Okay. Exact same concept now that we have the groups of notes. You're just going to start playing them over their respective chord. So there's D, C comes up next. G, D. Easy peasy. If you did part one prior to this video, a great exercise you can do to try to help put all this into your memory is to not just practice playing single note stuff, but practice playing the chord groups as if they were the chords. So for example, if you've got uh, a rhythm section going, a little hokey but you get the idea for the sake of practice so if that's playing along try playing the all of those groups that you've learned over the D we learned that and that from part one we learned this and this from part two so you could play that while D is is going same thing with the C same with the G It's a 
another great way to get the groups into your muscle memory so that you'll spot them. So if you're so if, if the rhythm section is playing a D, you don't have you don't have to think, oh well, uh, music theory D is a D F sharp and an A. Where are all my D F sharps and A's on this you know neck? What is the scale that this fits in? That stuff's all very very important. But if you're trying to come up with something on the fly, that is way too much information to process. By the time you've thought all of that, the chord's already on to the next chord. So you're behind. So by practicing these shapes, when you see D, your brain will start to visualize that, 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 that. And now you can recall all of that very fast. get the idea. It's not the coolest sounding thing, this is just getting started, but this is one of the ways that you can build good guitar solos and try to get lots of information into the brain, but be able to recall it all when you see just something as simple as, hey, that's a D chord for four beats. So there you go.